Hey, what's up? This is Nick from ZappyCode.com, and in this tutorial, I'm going to be introducing you to the cryptocurrency Solana, specifically how to create your own wallet in Solana, how to mint or create your own token there, and even make your own NFT. Those are a big three that I'm hoping that as you go through here, will really get your feet wet and you'll get a better grasp of what this is all about. So first off, what is Solana? Well, Solana is a cryptocurrency. You know, you know the mix, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, right? Uh, but I really think the best place to understand Solana is it's very similar to Ethereum in that both of them are programmable blockchains, meaning that you can have these smart contracts, uh, contracts on top of them, which means you can do DeFi, decentralized finance, you can create NFTs on top of them, uh, you can create decentralized apps. That's kind of my personal favorite thing uh, that that has to offer. So you may be saying, okay, the Solana thing is really similar to Ethereum. What's the big difference between the two? The big thing that Solana aims to do is to be much more scalable than Ethereum. If we look here on their website, they're really touting that, hey, you know, we're doing a ton of transactions here uh, and the fees for these are very low. Let's go ahead and reload the page here. Um, you can see that uh, the block times can be less than a second at times, but you also saw before we had one that was like three seconds there, so it's not always perfect. Uh, whereas with Ethereum, it's every 15 seconds, so this is definitely aiming to be faster there. The transaction fees, I'll tell you, this is a big deal because I've uh, tried creating some dApps for Ethereum in the past, and the fees just really don't make it fun. When anyone ha wants to interact with your contract and they have to spend like five or six dollars, it really just kind of sucks the air out of the room. Whereas right now, uh, we're looking at like uh, two percent of a penny right now if you want to you know be using Solana for your uh, dap or whatever so uh, anyways that's sort of the difference between Solana and Ethereum I really think kind of big picture you can see the two of them similarly except that Solana looks to be the scalable version of Ethereum so uh, with that in place uh, I like I said I think the best way to understand this is one create a wallet then make your own token and then also create an NFT. I think you'll get a good grasp from there on. So let's go ahead and move on to step one and that's creating your own wallet. Now, there's lots of different ways uh, to create a wallet. Uh, specifically, if you look in the documentation on Solana, you can do a paper wallet, a command line wallet, or you can also do a hardware wallet. Yeah, you'd probably wanna do the paper or hardware if you're looking for more uh, secure and long-term long -term things. But if you're just following along the tutorial here, I really just recommend doing uh, the file-based wallet that we're gonna uh, be doing here. So go ahead and click on uh, developers here on the Solana webpage. We're gonna go to the documentation, so docs.solana.com. And once we're there, we're gonna go to start building. So the first thing that we're gonna need is to be able to create a wallet inside of our terminal. Now, if you're on a Mac or Linux, that's gonna be the terminal that you're using. If you're on Windows, you're gonna be using uh, probably the command prompt. You may have something else installed that uh, you might be using. But uh, what you're gonna to wanna to do is over here in the docs, we're gonna move over to the command line and we're gonna do install the Solana tool suite. And depending on your different operating system here, I'm on Mac OS, so I'm gonna use this, but if you're on Windows, uh, we got instructions down here. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy this line of code, and I'm sure your version of Solana is gonna be different than filming. They uh, come out periodically here. And I'm gonna open up my terminal, okay? And I'm gonna paste that line of code that we had. So basically what this is gonna do is it's gonna download the latest version of Solana command line tools and the command line is just what we use here inside of the terminal. Uh, it's gonna both download and install it. So you can see it's a, a quite a bit of a file here, 100 megabytes, so I'm gonna come back when this is finished. But when it is, I'll show you what to do next. All right, so once that is finished, you should see a little message saying, hey, everything panned out. You also see a message saying that you need to add this to your path. So. If you don't know what a path is, it's basically telling your terminal here uh, what different programs you want to be able to run easily. And so I'm gonna copy this line here and uh, let's go ahead and close out of the terminal here and reopen it. And if we type out Solana, we should, it says nothing's going on here, but if we type out export space and then we paste in that line that we had before, that path, now if we type out Solana, uh, it's going to, you'll see all these different things that's saying, hey, this is how you can use it, right? Like this is going to prove to you that you have Solana installed 
and ready to use with your terminal. So I've had problems getting this to stick uh, inside of my path. So I recommend taking that line that you've copied and just saving it somewhere on your computer. I'm just gonna put this in my notes. If you ever open up your terminal and you type in Solana and enter and you don't get this output, uh, it's probably because you need to add this back into your path here, okay? So once we have this in place, once we have Solana able to be used here inside of our terminal, we want to create a wallet. So let's go ahead and move back into the documentation and we're gonna go over here to wallets and we're gonna go to under com command line wallets, we want the file system wallet, okay? So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna create what's called a key pair. Basically, with a wallet, this is true of almost any cryptocurrency, you have a private key and a public key. The public key is basically one that you can share with the world, it's almost like your email address that people can send money to you if you give them that public key, they'll be able to send you uh, things, whereas the private key, that's like your password to your email. So that's one that you really wanna keep secret and not share with the world, but when you create uh, this key pair, that's what you're creating. You're creating the public and the private. So let's first, uh, as it says here in the documentation, create a place that we're gonna wanna save this. So here on my terminal, I'm gonna wanna save this into my desktop. So I'm gonna go ahead and move into my desktop. I do that with a CD space capital desktop, okay? And once I'm there, I want to make a directory or a folder that's gonna hold this information. So I'm gonna do mkdir, short for make directory, and I'm gonna call this Solana wallet, just like that, okay? So now that I have this directory, uh, what I wanna do is I wanna create this uh, private public key pair, and I wanna save it into that folder. So you can see this line of code that they have here. Uh, we're gonna adopt it a little bit. So I'm gonna just take Solana keygen new out file, okay? So I'm gonna copy this, come back to my terminal, paste this, and I'm gonna say that I want this to be in that folder that I just made called Solana Wallet, and if you hit a tab, it will help you do an autocomplete in terminal. Uh, Solana Wallet, and then we're gonna name it, I'm just gonna use the same name here, mykeypair.json, okay? So uh, we'll go ahead and hit enter here. Now next, it's gonna ask you and say, hey, do you want to have some sort of password uh, to protect this, uh, it's gonna be a series of words coming up that's essentially your private key. We'll talk about more of that in a second, but uh, essentially, if you wanna add some more security, you can put a password here. For current development right now, I'm not gonna put a password. I've had too many crypto projects where I make passwords that I forget what the password was, and for something just simple right now that I'm not gonna be using out live in the world, I don't wanna make it more complicated than I need to. So I'm just gonna hit enter, leave it blank, and what you see here uh, is our public private key pair. So what we have here for the public, this is that address that I can share with the world. Um, this is basically saying, hey, this is where I live. Again, it's that email address. Anybody can contact you or send you Solana or things via this address. Whereas this random, a seemingly random thing of words here, uh, this is our private key. If you have these words in this order, you can recreate this wallet on any computer that you want to. Now also with that, anybody that has access to these words instantly has access to everything inside of your wallet. Um, the only thing on top of that is if, if they need the passphrase, uh, then you know they would need that in order to get those. But again, uh, these, you really wanna make sure that nobody sees these. So this is not something that you should screenshot save inside of your notes on your computer. Really don't save this digitally anywhere. This is something where you would wanna write it on paper and go put it in a drawer somewhere if you were gonna keep this for long term. But again, I'm showing mine to you right now. This is just some testing stuff that I'm doing for fun. Uh, once you move on to actually wanna be doing something live uh, that you're gonna be sharing with the world, that's when you would want to create a new key pair. And if you're wondering, you know, how do I create a new wallet? How do I create that new you know, private public key pair? Just that same uh, term that we did up here before, the Solana key gen new, just create a new place to save your wallet and uh, it'll automatically do that for you, okay? So anyways, now that we have this in place, we have that private public key pair, we can move on to creating our wallet, okay? So I, or essentially the wallet has already been created here. 
Um, and there's some things that you can do here. So for example, if you like want to know if you ever need to find that address again, you can go ahead and go back to your terminal and say Solana keygen, pub key, and then put in the uh, file here. Oh, let's just do the .json and it will spit out that same public address. So if you ever need to get back to ac access to it again, you can verify it do all sorts of things, but to me, that's beyond what we need to do. What we know right now is that we have access to this wallet. So the next step for us is uh, to be able to play around with this wallet. And in order to do that, we need some money. Now in Solana, the, the currency that is used is called SOL, short for Solana. And so, uh, you know, if you want to go buy this, you can go out to different exchanges like Binance and actually buy the Solana stuff and send it from that exchange into your wallet here. But if you're just looking to play around, there's what's called the main net. That is like what's live out, you know, actual Solana stuff. But then there's also called the dev net, which is like essentially a place for you to practice and, and see what you're using here. So let's go ahead and move over to our uh, transfer tokens. Let's see. Uh, we want to go back to the command line and we want to go to send and receive tokens, okay? Uh, so this is gonna help us uh, learn how to work with Solana. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this airdrop to essentially receive some Solana on, again, what's called that dev net. So this isn't like real Solana money that we can use uh, you know, out in the world for anything of value. It's more to understand the systems here and see how it works. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy this line of code that says we're looking for this airdrop of one. We're trying to get one Solana added to our account so that we can use it. So we're gonna do our Solana airdrop one space. Let's go back to our terminal, paste that in. And then we want to paste in this address. We're saying, hey, please give us some money at this address and then add another space after that. And this is where we specify, we're trying to get this from that dev net. Again, this is sort of the test way to do this, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and paste this, okay? So it's saying, hey, we're requesting this airdrop and it's saying, boom, you just got some Solana in your account. Now, this is where uh, I think it's important to understand how we can interact and use our wallet. We can use the command line that we have here. So for example, we can say, what is our balance? If we wanna check our balance, we can say Solana balance, space, have the name of our address here. I'm gonna copy and paste that and I'm gonna specify that it's on the dev net, okay? Because if we, our, our wallet exists both in the dev net and the live main net, um, but we only got money added to the dev net one, so I'm gonna specify that here, and it's gonna tell us, hey, you have one Solana, one soul right here. Um, but let me tell you, it, it is not a good user experience to use and view your wallet in the command line here, it's kind of, tedious and I really recommend using two different ways in order to sort of interact with your wallet better. So the first one is uh, we can actually go online here. And so let's in a new tab, go to explorer, explorer.solana.com. Okay, so this is basically uh, a website that lets you view what's currently happening with the Solana blockchain. And so uh, if we go ahead and, for example, copy our address here, and on this website, you need to change from the main net to the dev net, because remember again, that's where our money is alive. And we go ahead and paste this in here. Okay, you can see uh, it has our wallet that we just made. It says, okay, there's this address here, and it has one soul inside of it. And so, this is really useful because if we ever wanna see what's happened with our wallet, if we're like, you know, sending soul back and forth to somebody, whatever, we can come to this website and it's gonna be a much better experience viewing it here than going to the command line and having to type out things. And uh, it just makes it a little bit easier to work with, in my opinion. We can sort of see the transaction history of everything that's going on. So this is one level of convenience, but I wanna go even one step further. So if you go scroll down uh, on the actual page of the tutorial here on Zappy Code, uh, I have a link to get you to Phantom, which is a wallet that you can add to your browser. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this when this goes live. This is gonna be a whole lot uh, prettier here, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and just go to this phantom.app slash download, okay? 
And this is a extension that you can add in uh, to Chrome or Brave. Uh, and basically, again, this is a easier way to interact with your wallet. So I'm gonna go ahead and say add to Brave, add extension, okay. And now that we have that, you can see we get this little ghost over in the, cor in the corner here um, that allows us to interact with this. And in fact, if we hit this little extension, I'm gonna do the pin so that we can see our little ghost friend. So this is currently in beta. So if you wanna get access to this, if you type in 1729, uh, and that's the whole reason I'm doing this tutorial is uh, Bology 1729, uh, it'll allow you to have access. And so from here, uh, it's gonna ask you, do you want to create a new wallet or do you wanna import a seed phrase? So what we want to do is import a seed phrase. Like we already have an existing wallet. So we're gonna go ahead and do import seed phrase. And let's go back to our terminal here. And what we wanna do is copy these characters that we had before, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and hit copy on this. And I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna paste this. Now, if you have like closed your terminal and you no longer have access to this, I'm gonna tell you how you can fix that here in a second. But just go ahead and paste this. Now, this is one piece of uh, advice here. So uh, anytime somebody has access to these words in this order, you're done for. They have access to your entire wallet. So if you ever have a Solana wallet that's on the mainnet with money in it, you should never share these anywhere with any program unless you completely trust it. Uh, there are so many scams when someone pretends to be, for example, somebody from Solana and it says like, hey, you know, we need to help you with your account. Give us your seed phrase. Never give your seed phrase to anybody, okay? So with that, uh, let's go ahead and say import seed phrase. We didn't have a password. So we'll just go ahead and do uh, blank here. Yeah, it's, we don't have a, oh, this is asking for a password with Phantom. So this is not something um, that's that, like a password that we just created there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just make a quick little temporary password. Now it must be eight characters long. Okay, so we've got that. It's saying this is how you can access it. Awesome. Okay, now that we have that done, now when we click on our little ghost guy here, uh, it's gonna bring up our account. And if we look at it, uh, it says we have nothing in there until we go over here to the settings and we change the network. So we want to be on that DevNet. And now when we come back to the little money tab here, we should see that we have one uh, soul. It does not look like that came through. And in fact, if we look at the name of this wallet, that's not the same of what we had there. So, and this brings up a good point, uh, that import didn't work exactly like we were hoping for. And if you, for example, had had that closed, let me show you a, a better way to, to move through here. So we're gonna go ahead and on Phantom, uh, we're gonna hit this little menu button here, say add or connect wallet. And I'm gonna say, I want to import a private key. And I'm gonna call this uh, Nick's test wallet, okay? And this private key that it's asking for, this is in fact not uh, that you know chunk of letters and numbers, or excuse me, that phrase of words in a particular order. What it's looking for here is what's actually on our computer. Uh, so if we go ahead and open up, like just inside of your file explorer, if we go to our desktop, for example, inside of Solana Wallet, there's that mykeypair.json file. If we go ahead and open this, give my computer a second here. Uh, this is essentially gonna have the raw private key that we can use here, okay? So it looks kind of funny. It's just a bunch of uh, numbers here inside of brackets, but we're gonna go ahead and copy this paste this in and say import. And now you can see, look, this looks more like our wallet. That's the, the proper address, right? That ADRV, ADRV. Again, your address is gonna be completely different and separate from mine, but you can see how they're matching up there. And this one shows that we do have one Solana. Now remember, if I go back to change the network and I make this the main net, and I go to check out my balance, I've, I've got no money here. But if I come back and I say that I want to go to the DevNet, well, now I've got the one Solana here, okay? So uh, this is 
the first step done, remember we were gonna do three things here. Create a wallet, then create our own token, and then create an NFT. So we've done number one. Uh, you now know how to create a wallet in Solana. You know how to look on it on your computer. You know how to look on it on the Explorer. And you also know how to look at it inside of this Phantom wallet. And again, my personal favorite is the Phantom wallet or the Explorer. It's just visually much uh, easier to work with. So now let's go ahead and move on to creating a token. So let's talk about when we say we're creating a token, what does that even mean? Well, if you've ever heard of an ERC-20 token, that is a token that's built on top of Ethereum. It's a way to essentially create your own currency on top of Ethereum. Well, in Solana, we can do the same thing. We can create these tokens on top of Solana. And you may be thinking, well, why would you need your own token? There's a ton of different possibilities of why you could use it. I think some fun ones are, let's say that you know, you're a professional who's offering some consultation services and you can only work with a certain amount of people. You could create your own coin and maybe create like 20 coins and you could sell each of those 20 coins saying, hey, if you buy one of these coins, you can, you know, have a consultation with me. And whenever someone does the consultation, they send you a coin. And once they send you one, then you could put one back out on the market up for auction. And that could be a really cool way to see what the actual price or demand of uh, your time is via consultations, right? Is, you know, using something like that. Uh, you can use it to organize some group where, you know, you distribute tokens to people and say, hey, you know, this is, uh, you know, your voting rights essentially, and you can verify if people have tokens and take their input based on that. And even I think some point in the future, a goal with a lot of people is to say, I want, you could create a company for instance, and the token that you create is essentially the uh, shares of stock that you could distribute with people and people could buy and sell that for whatever they want on whatever exchange, person to person, whatever. There's all sorts of possibilities that open up with creating your own token. So let's go ahead and learn how to do this on Solana. I'm gonna go back to the solana.com website, go to developers and uh, documentation. And before we had clicked on the start building, but now we want to do an SPL token. So again, this is what I had said. This is, you know, it, the Solana's version of the ERC-20 token, an SPL token, okay? So uh, if you want to create your own token here inside this token program, this is a great little tutorial. I'm going to give you sort of my polished version. Uh, so here it's going to say that you have to have Rust and do all these things to get it installed. We actually have already got this all installed. In fact, if you want to check and see if you have this, uh, go ahead and scroll down to SPL-token. Just go back to your terminal and just paste in SPL-token. And if you see something like this, this means it's properly up and running on your computer. There's nothing more uh, for you to install there. And we've already done this airdrop here, so we already got that, no problem. Uh, the one thing that we're going to want to work with here is make sure that we're working uh, with the DevNet. So let's go ahead and type in this Solana config get. Okay, so if we go ahead and paste this in, uh, you can see that we are actually working with the mainnet here. So we wanna go ahead and fix that. Also, it's looking for my key pair in the wrong location. So we're gonna have to fix that as well. So let's go ahead and scroll down. We're gonna set uh, the config to be working with the devnet. So I'm gonna just copy this line of code here, okay. Awesome, so now if we, and on the terminal, if you hit the up arrow, it gets your last command. So I'm gonna hit that twice to do this Solana config get. And if we go ahead and look at this, okay, now we're working with the DevNet. So that's a step in the right direction, okay? The next thing that we're gonna need to set is uh, the location of that key pair. So let's go ahead and do this Solana config set key pair. So I'm gonna copy up till there, and then I'm gonna space and say that this is inside of that folder, the Solana wallet slash my key pair dot JSON. Okay, and again, if, depending on what your name is, it might be different, but now if we do that Solana config get, we should see that we're working with the DevNet and also it has the correct location of that key pair, okay? Uh, so with that in place, uh, let's go ahead and look a little bit what's here. Essentially what we wanna do is create our own token. Uh, then what we can do is once we're in charge of that token, we can decide how many tokens we want there to be. 
uh, and we can even like turn off the supply. There's all sorts of different things uh, that we can do. But let's go back to the tutorial here, and we're gonna. It's really simple just to start. Now, regardless of what you're gonna be doing with your token, you just do SPL dash token create token. So copy this line here, go ahead and paste this, and what it does here is it goes and it creates. Uh, a new token and this right here this 2 a d a p whatever and yours is going to be different than mine this is the new token that i've created think of this as the name for the token so again if i copy this and i come back to that explorer website and make sure you're on the devnet here if i search that this is a new token that's live that everybody out on the internet can see so it's called the unknown token like there hasn't been a name properly given to this but you can see right here, currently, the supply, meaning how many tokens exist, is zero. Uh, but it says the person who's in charge of making this is this address, which, again, remember, is ours here. If we go to our little ghost friend, um, you can see that's the same account right there. We can click on it and see that there's one Solana in there. Uh, again, this is a much better <laughs> interface to view and look at this stuff than the terminal, right? So. Uh, once we have this in place, we are now the minter, the creator of this token. We can create as much of this as we want. So there's a couple of things to consider here. When you're in charge of your own token, your own currency, if you want to call it that, you can do whatever you want. So for example, you could have it be an unlimited supply and be like all the other governments out there that have their own currency, right? In the US, we just print trillions and trillions of dollars. That's like having a token here and having no cap on supply. You just say, whenever I need some, I'm gonna make some. And so if we want to create some of our new token here, we're gonna go back to the documentation and we're gonna scroll down a little bit here. What we need to do is create an account that can accept this new currency. So this is where things get a little bit complicated with Solana, like we have our wallet that's holding right now our one Solana fund. Um, but in order for it to accept this new token that we've created, we have to create an account within that wallet in order to do so, okay? And this is where the whole reason we airdropped ourselves, or not ourselves, we've gotten a, a um, one Sol uh, sent to us by the developers is because we're gonna need it in order to interact uh, with this new token here. So you'll see that here in a second. So what we're gonna do, well, in fact, we've already used some. If you look at our balance, it's no longer one. The reason that we used some was to create that new token, and we had to send that out there to the blockchain, and so that's why um, it has used a little bit of that SOL there. Um, uh, but what we're going to do here is we're going to do this SPL token create account. Okay. And uh, let's see. Oh, that's what I had pasted there. Okay. SPL token create account. And what we wanna do is specify which token it is that we're wanting to create an account for. So again, uh, remember we had this in the Explorer here, so we can go ahead and just copy this here, or if you wanna scroll up and copy that, you can too. But I'm gonna go ahead and paste that in there. And now our account is able to work with this currency, okay? So now that we're able to do that, and this, this part is so much fun, we can now create, uh, whatever amount of this token that we want to. Uh, so I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna say that I want to mint some money. I wanna create some of this new currency that I have here. So I'm gonna do SPL token mint and I'm gonna copy this, okay? And I'm gonna come out and say SPL token mint and what we wanna add here is not the address that we want it to go under, we want to add what token it is so if we go back to the Explorer, uh, we can copy this here. Remember this 2AD, that's the name of our token. Uh, and if you're wondering, well, what account does it go into? It goes into whatever the Mint authority is, which that's our original account there. So um, I had messed up when I was filming this. Uh, so I've actually added 150 token already. I've minted that much. Um, and I had to clear what I had in the terminal before, but if I'm gonna go ahead and paste in the name of our token, and then I'm gonna say how much I wanna add. So again, I already have 150 in there. I'm gonna add 100 more, so I'm just gonna type 100 here, hit enter, and it's gonna take a second here to get this up and running, but to see this new token, if we come back and we go to the Explorer here, I'm just gonna refresh the page. You saw that we had zero there. Now it shows that 250. 
How cool is that? That's the live thing up and running there. And here you can see, this is when uh, I had done uh, the, I think this is when I created the count. I think this is when I had 100, this is when I added 50. There should probably be another one coming up here. There it is, the one that added that last 100. Um, but this is all live, and, and if we go to uh, Phantom here, we can see that we have uh, an unknown token. And if we click on this, uh, you can see that we have 250 of this unknown token inside of here. Um, so it, it's pretty cool that that's all it takes to create a token and start you know, pumping out, minting, whatever amount that we want to. Now, the thing is, uh, with Solana, you can just continue printing and printing and printing if you want to. If you're the US government, again, there's no stop to that end. You just keep pushing it out there. But if at some point you want to say, you know what, this is it. Uh, I don't want to do anything beyond this. This is the cap of the amount of this particular token out there. You can set a final amount uh, for that token. And so kind of a fun thing since uh, the whole reason I'm doing this tutorial is because of 1729 and uh, Bology. We're going to create a token uh, that's sort of in honor to this. And we're, and we're going to create only 1729 tokens from that. So if you go to the about here, the 1729, uh, this is from uh, where it is, Ramanujan's number. This is uh, apparently this very uh, wise, smart Indian mathematician. I'll be honest, I don't know a ton about him. I've just hopped on the 1729 train. But anyways, this was his particular favorite number, I guess. And uh, so I think it'd be cool to make a token that only has 1,729 tokens. So let's go ahead and uh, let's open up the calculator here. Let's do 1729 minus 250, okay? Uh, so we've gotta go mint 1479. So I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna do the up arrow so that I can change this. And so now I just want to add, let me make sure I don't mess it up, 1479 here, okay? So that should be going through there. Let's go back to the Explorer and we should see that this is now 1729. Perfect. So this is the current supply and now I wanna cap this off. So if we go back to the token program documentation, what we can do uh, is we can shut this down. So there's all sorts of stuff that you can do with the tokens and you, I'll let you uh, take a look at that if you want to. Um, but where is it that we can shut this down? I must have. Scrolled past that already. Da, 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 da. Transferring, wrapping soul, five balance, minting. Okay, now where is this? This must be further down. Da, 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 da. I know that it's disable. I'm going to do a find for disable. Here we go. Uh, this is where we can, oh, this was closer up to the top. It was right below where I was looking into. Okay, so basically if you want to stop the flow, you just do SBL token authorize, the name of the token, and then you say mint and disable, okay? So let's go ahead and do this. I'm gonna do SPL token authorize, okay? I'm gonna come back, copy that, paste it in there, and I wanna say mint. And just to make sure I have it exactly right, we want dash dash disable. I'm gonna have trouble getting that, so I'm just gonna type it out. Dash dash disable, okay. All right, so this is now cut it off. So you'll notice if I try and go mint another 1479 tokens here, uh, it's gonna say eight. Hey, you can't do this. We, you have already cut this down. And the cool thing here is if we go back to the Explorer page, uh, this currently shows current supply. Now, when I refresh this page, it says fixed supply, and it has this amount. So this is a really cool concept because, right, like you can create a token, and if someone checks this out and says, oh, now I know there's only gonna be 1729 of this particular token, it makes it much, that much more rare and special. Uh, and, and this is something that cannot be undone. So if you're ever going to disable uh, the flow of your token, make sure that it is what you want to do um, uh, because there's no going back from that. But again, it makes those tokens out there all that more cool. And again, if you want to send 
this token to somebody, they have to create that account first and then you can send it to them. The other thing that you can do if you don't want to have to have someone create an account is you can sort of do an airdrop into someone's account in which you have to spend a little extra soul to do this, but it basically makes the account for them and deposits it into their account. So uh, again, if you scroll on to the, the sending uh, stuff, you'll be able to find that there. Okay, so uh, remember this tutorial, three parts, creating a wallet, making your own token. Now, the third thing that I want to go into is creating your own NFT. And in fact, this is referenced here on this page uh, in this create a non-fungible token. Essentially, what you do is you just create uh, a token. You only put out one of them and then you disable uh, the rest out there. So let's go ahead and do this. I thought this would be fun. I believe there's an error in the documentation here. So when they say when you create a token that you should specify that it can go out to nine decimal points, meaning that it can be split up to, what is that? Is that like a hundred millionth of your particular type of token? I think they actually wanted it to be zero because the whole point of an NFT is there's only that one that exists and it can only be owned by one particular person. Um, so anyways, let's go ahead and just walk through step three here, which is creating your own NFT, which really all it is is making your own token of one and then cutting off the supply. But what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do this SPL token, create token and specify the decimal. Now they have nine here, but I swear this is wrong in the documentation. I've emailed um, the dev team here to hopefully find uh, if this is a typo or if I'm missing something here. But I'm gonna do this SPL create token decimals and I'm gonna specify this as zero. Okay, so we're gonna go out and create this token. Okay, and uh, let's go ahead and copy this. I'm gonna bring this into the Explorer here so that we can check it out. And look at this, you can see the current supply is zero with no decimals there. Again, I think that's the right move with that. Uh, but what we wanna do is create an account so that we can interact with this. So I'm gonna say, create an account for the token that we just made. Okay, so we we're gonna go ahead and do that. It's gonna take a little bit of soul to do that. And then, uh, or at least I believe it does, maybe the token part is the only part that takes soul, but uh, the next part that we're gonna do is we're going to mint one and only one of these. So I'm gonna say mint, and let's go ahead and copy uh, the address of that token. Okay, and we want to create one. So, Let's go ahead and go to the Explorer, refresh. You can see now that the supply is one, but that says current supply. We want it to be fixed. Uh, so this is essentially turns into an NFT. And so what we're gonna do is disable this. So we're gonna say SPL token authorize. All right, we're gonna do the name uh, of this new token. Okay, and then we're gonna come back and say mint disable. Okay, mint disable, there we go. So now that we've done that, let's come back to the Solana Explorer. We re reload the page here and look, there's this new token, it's a fixed supply, it can't be broken out into decimals uh, and there's only one of it. So this is for all intents and purposes in NFT. So this is now, if you can connect this particular address with a piece of artwork or some sort of experience, whatever it is, you, this is now your NFT on the Solana blockchain uh, that you can hype up and sell for hopefully whatever money uh, you can get out there. So there you have it. Hopefully uh, you've gotten your feet wet, wet with Solana. A, a big sort of closing thing here. We've been doing all this fun stuff on the DevNet. And if you're ever going to be actually making your own token on the main net and sharing it with people and doing things, wipe everything that you have currently on your computer and start fresh. And when you create that new wallet with that key pair, you gotta be very protective of that seed phrase. Again, I recommend writing that on paper and putting it somewhere that you're never gonna uh, get access to. With the token thing, right? Like if you're gonna have an open supply of a particular token, if anybody get, gets access to your key pair on your computer or your seed phrase, they can make as much as that token as they want to. They're the new owners of that token. So 
All the security stuff that comes around crypto becomes especially important if you're going to be creating your own token. You've got to make sure whatever machine you're doing that on is absolutely rock solid, uh, ready to go, and that it's not being, you know, has some sort of malware that somebody's watching or anything. But just a caution that, you know, when you're quote unquote doing this for real on the main net, uh, you should not be as haphazard as we were when we were creating uh, that wallet and everything. Okay, so uh, kind of a fun part of this, I actually went ahead and created my own 1729 uh, token again in honor to Balaji and Ramanujan. I'm hopefully getting this name right there. Uh, and if you would like one of these tokens, I'm giving a token to anybody that is a uh, Zappy Code member. So if you want to join Zappy Code, uh, you can come uh, join here. I teach programming not only uh, stuff sometimes like blockchains and cryptocurrencies. I couldn't hear what you said. Sorry, Siri's getting to me here. Um, but uh, I also have courses on making apps, making websites with Python, or just straight up Python if you want to learn Python. Uh, you should come become a member. But again, if you want one of these 1729 tokens, there's only 1,729 of them. If you are a member, message me and I will send you one of these tokens. Okay, so there you have it. Hopefully you enjoyed uh, and tell me what you think of Solana. I think it's pretty fun. I uh, am excited to see if it can hold up to this claim of being the scalable version of Ethereum. Should be fun.